Welcome to the Alive Lauren podcast and the place of celebrating juicy, soulful, whole living. And today I have three delicious shares, so we may actually go a teeny weeny bit over the 10 minute mark, but let's see how we go. So share number one, yesterday, because normally Thursday evenings, if one or both of my sons are coming for dinner on Friday, Thursday nights feel like a bit of a master chef final because it's like after work and it's this mad missioning to make everything because I'm pretty much like mad about whole foods and uh, yeah which means pretty much a lot of stuff gets made from scratch so yeah it, I feel like the only thing missing is the cameras but it's definitely a master chef final and the other thing that's missing is someone to clean up everything afterwards um, but neither of them are coming this week so my Thursday was free and Then a friend shared an event which was outdoors and like a DJ and music and really beautiful because where I stay, it's quite low. So as you walk around, you don't really see much of the horizon or feel like spacious. And this venue was a little bit like on the outskirts, still considered part of Jerusalem, but in a place called Ain Karim, which where it was, you literally could see to the horizon and see these areas of like undeveloped and the areas of the lights are so stunning, all natural, all outside, very rustic. And um, these like stone staircases to the different levels and the bottom level where most of the music and dancing was happening or well, where the dancing music was, was happening. And my first share was that at one point when I went to fetch my bag because I was leaving, I tried to walk round a tree the one direction. It was dark and everything. I actually didn't see. It was quite a like thick, solid branch that all of a sudden I felt this like really sore scratch against my back. And yeah, so I'd re- I didn't actually, like it felt really painful at the time, but I couldn't see because on my back. And then when I got to lift home with friends, because they saw my back and they said, oh my goodness, like what happened? <laughs> and yeah, and then actually she's looking at the mirror and then taking a picture. It's quite like a severe, <laughs> it's about a 10 centimeter, 8, 10 centimeter long scratch that doesn't need stitches or anything, but it still is, looked quite like red and angry. And my share with this was just that, wow, like actually to embrace pain, because pain is an indicator of like something that needs to be dealt with. Like in this case, that was drawing attention to something was like going on there that shouldn't be. But the other thing also was just the absolute massive awe and reverence and wonderment and fascination and humility for having this body that we did nothing for, but we get to like journey through this lifetime with it that is so programmed for self-healing. Because if you go down to the cellular level, on the level of cells, that rip from that branch was the equivalent of like a tsunami, the equivalent of like a massive, like nine, ten, eight, nine level earthquake for all the cells in an instant that were completely, some of them wiped out, some of them torn to pieces. And amazing how the body just programmed with this inherent connected to the everything that is, that it just gets on with it. And tirelessly, no complaining, no, it isn't fair, just this is what's happening. And just gets on with the job of repair. I do nothing. I'm going to be doing nothing. And it's already repairing. Okay, yeah, so I sprayed a bit of colloidal silver just to kind of clean it up. And I had a shower and I sprayed colloidal silver again this morning. Um, But the magic of, oh my God, what is going on there completely without me lifting a finger. What a phenomenal, phenomenal blessing and gift. That's my number one, to have more reverence and awe and wonderment about our physical body. Wow. And gratitude. And then my second chair is Mickey has been chatting around. I'm, I'm in chapter four, Lucid Self of the Untethered Soul. And this example of a movie and being drawn in. So you either in the place of witness of awareness or you're in the place of getting lost in the objects. The idea is there's objects. So there's things in our physical world, like the phone, your car, um, anything in the physical world that you can see, touch, taste, smell. And if I ask you, are you any of those? You're clearly not. You're the one experiencing, touching it, seeing it, hearing it. You're not it. Equally on the inside, our emotions and thoughts are also not us. They're things we experience, but they're not who we are. So now if you think about a movie, a movie, when we go watch, 
have you, if you ever see a movie where they d- don't sync, something goes wrong, and the lips and the sound are not synced. It's very just like jarring and it's disconcerting, and you can't really watch and enjoy. But when they synced, it's very easy just with sound and visual alone to get so engrossed in the movie. I know this happens to me that you just actually lose a sense of where you are. Now, think about life. Life is like a movie on steroids because not only have we got sight and sound synced, we are having an experience where all five senses are synced and emotions and feelings. Imagine going to a movie, and then I was thinking about these like video games, because video games, to extent, are actually up-leveling this. Because video games, you've got sight and sound synced, but then you also are playing as a player, and you know their storyline, and you are the player in the game, so you're much closer to feeling the emotions and the thoughts. Okay, you don't have touch yet in a video game. But yeah, it's blurring into much more intensity of how easy, more easily you can get drawn in and lost. Um, because when you get so focused on the objects, you lose the sense of self. So to have this as an awareness in the day of just like that we are not, just as we get absorbed in a movie, I know I certainly do. Like to have everything synced on every level, which is this life experience. No wonder, no wonder so much of the time we're like sucked in. It's like you think those video games are like challenging. Life itself is the ultimate video game to constantly, with the goal of constantly coming back to being aware that we are the awareness experiencing it all. We aren't the experience itself. And I just loved as well, Mickey gives this amazing tool. It's so like when we, if you pick up, you feel like you're getting lost. Just literally in your mind, to just repeat, hello, hello, hello. And it's not even to get fixated on the thought of, oh, I can hear the hello. It's just to kind of bring ourselves back to the witness place. So that was my second delicious share for today. And number three, so there's a beautiful principle. I find improv the most amazing container for, yeah, like practices and things to bring into life itself. And there's a principle of yes and, which I've spoken about before, but I got like a whole new level of yes and recently. So yes and presupposes that, as opposed to yes but, where you're challenging and not agreeing with what somebody says, improv works on the principle that whatever, as you spontaneously are given a scenario, you may have an idea of where you want it to go. But if the person you're with says something that takes it in a completely opposite direction, you need to yes and, which means you need to drop your stuff. And then now whatever they've said is 100% true. So I had an incident this week where so I've returned to go to be a danza class with my flatmate. And then my improv teacher, we were chatting and she hadn't heard of the danza. And she's an expressive arts master's um, ther- Wait, a Masters of Expressive Therapy, Expressive Arts Therapy. Okay, some, something like that. So she's got a really like deep background in using expressive um, different modalities for therapy. So she often has gone to things, always wants to like broaden her perspective and understand what's out there. So she asked me then about would my flatmate, who might be a runza teacher, be open to her coming for just one drop-in? Because even my improv teacher knows, so she does, once a month she does open a drop-in where you can come and just experience one session. But if you are going to want to take it up, she does ask for a commitment of eight weeks because there's something magical that happens with the group dynamic when the group consistently are working together. And you cannot, you cannot really get a grasp of it from a lesson one. You're going to get a very, very superficial understanding. So she is very well aware of this. So she just said, like, because of her the space in which she works, she wants to have some sort of context for Bia Danza experientially. And I happen to go on a Sunday night, which is a night she cannot make. And because she does have a deep background, and she's done a lot of other conscious dance modalities, she's happy to go to a class that's a higher level. So, and knowing that she would get more benefit from a longer term. But because of wanting to get a more full-rounded experience, even asking me if there's ever some intensives run like for a weekend or a couple of days, because she'd even love that. So I can also forward her details of that. Um, but the bottom line is, I asked why I'm coming to all of this, is then I asked my flatmate about my improv teacher coming for one drop-in, saying that I understand it's not ideal and it's better to commit to a certain minimum number 
she knows this herself because this is how she runs her classes but just to get an experience of it would you be open and then my flatmate was responding that for her to actually get like yes she could but for her to actually get like a see progress and to um, get a real sense of what it is she should commit to at least a number of weeks and she's really not going to get an understanding from one and what was happening there from there okay we each said something once and I geared into yes but <laughs> I guess equally because what happened was we landed up going in this loop because then I was like yes I understand she understands that but <laughs> She just wants to have it for an experience. And then my flatmate kind of replied again about how she's not going to get the experience and she should come for longer and that. And I swear we were like a broken record, the two of us. And at the time, I was aware of the stuckness, but I like was floundering a little bit like, how do we get ourselves moving here? And then at some point, I mean, we kind of cycled out of it, just that I kind of kept returning to the question of, I understand, so are you open or are you closed or open to her just coming for one drop-in? But then on reflecting on it, I realized later that, oh my God, just reminded me, there's a, when I did the years of network marketing, there were amazing tools and books and things on communication. And one of them said that people don't, um, like they won't listen until they know how much you care. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And then also Laura Markham talks about connection in parenting. She's like a parenting expert, but oh my God, her work in terms of like adults parenting their own inner child, it is just like next level amazing in terms of practicality. So on that note, AHA Parenting is the website with huge amounts of free resources. And even if you have no children or they're past rearing like parenting age or whatever, like just phenomenal for inner child work. So Laura also talks about the first step. So she's got three things in terms of like three pillars for parenting. And the first one is connection. Before anything is connection. And then because nothing's going to happen, I'm trying to think what the other two are because I know it's coaching. Um, the last one is coaching. Um, and the middle one, I think it's some sort of, God, I'd have to go look back. But anyways, just hold on a sec. Oh, no, I don't want to do this because then sometimes I lose this. So um, number one is connection. And then exactly. And then also, God, there's a guy. Now I forget. Oh, he was the hostage negotiator. And then he went into business and helping to use hostage negotiation tools to teach people how to better connect and communicate in business. But also very applicable to life. Um, can't think of... Uh, his name or the book name um, but I'm sure if you googled FBI agent uh, hostage negotiator who now works in business sector like you'll find him um, but also his whole thing is also connecting to the other person's reality that even if you don't believe it you're not going to make any progress with a hostage um, taker unless he feels that you legitimately and authentically are connecting to his world because if you're doing it pretend pretend he's feeling that he has to really feel like you're connecting as a genuine friend and you care about how he sees things. Or, and so here again, connection. So I realize on reflection, but just how in the moment sometimes it's not easy to see. <laughs> Even if you sense, like I was sensing our stuckness. And I was like, oh God, what, what, do, what do I do here? And just couldn't figure my way through. But upon reflection, I was like, if I had employed yes and, that actually both of us, we were wanting our points of view legitimized. And because neither of us were feeling heard, we weren't feeling like we were connecting. So both of us kept repeating. So if one of us had done a yes and, as if I played more into actually reflecting and hearing, yes, and I'm hearing, it seems like you feel like she's really not going to get value from just coming for one session, even though she's got an expressive arts therapy background. And if I would have played into the yes and then we probably would have gone a bit deeper. And then at a certain point, it would have closed and it probably then would have come around to my flatmate being able to hear me. Um, so that was very interesting and very powerful. I'm grateful for that reflection. So yes, we did go over the 10 minutes. So precious soul on, I hope for you equally, delicious notes. Here is two marveling, 
at the gift that is our body and everything it does in every moment to get us, help us actually experience this journey. And may we, yes, and a whole lot more. When you have situations where you're feeling shift in energy, more in a conflict situation or stuff feeling stuck and you feel like you're just both, like you're not being heard, to do a yes and with the other person. Just remember the power of yes and yes and a connection first. And I know that I had a third one. Ah, yes, being mindful of this incredibly powerful movie of life <laughs> itself. Oh, and to come back, come back to see, am I lost in the, in the objects? Am I lost in the movie of life, the game of life? Or can I come back to remember that I am the one experiencing this all, behind it all? However vivid the experiences are, they're there for the moment to be felt, to be lived fully, and to be released, and just to be with the flow, this incredible opportunity of life for the teeniest, tiniest, weeniest glimpse that we get to live. Happy adventuring, precious soul. Mwah!